Hey there guys, how's it going? This is Rexford here, and welcome back to yet another gimmick tutorial, and today we're going to be doing is going over some swords, or as I should say, sword. Um, basically, this is the end result of this tutorial, as you guys see here, and we have this little player, you can move to the left and the right, and when we press the X key, we get this sword that appears, and has this little jabbing motion, cool stuff like that, so that's what we're going to be working on today, guys, and also, depending on what direction, like, that's the direction the sword will appear, and also, if you're moving, it will stay with you, and all that kind of cool stuff, so then let's go ahead and exit uh, this little screen here, head over to gaming maker and see how this all works now before I go over this I just want to let you guys know a few things one uh, the code for this tutorial although it is very simple uh, will be in the description so you can guys copy and paste it over um, also the link to the example that I built here uh, will also be in the description so if you guys want to go ahead and download or download download that you can go ahead and do that so nonetheless uh, let's go ahead and start this thing off by going over these sprites starting with the SBR underscore player sprite and uh <coughs> <laughs> Jeez, I apologize, guys. My throat is just giving me a lot of trouble today. Um, but basically what we have here is a uh, spread of our player facing to the right and a spread of our player facing to the left. And this just pertains to the movement that I showed you guys in the beginning. Uh, if you don't really want him to like really move to the left and right or whatever, uh, or look like he's actually facing that way, uh, you don't have to do that. That's just extra detail. But nonetheless, uh, we uh, want to have an SBR underscore sword sprite. And same thing like the player, uh, we actually do want to have a sword facing to the right and left. That is actually uh, necessary. And this sword sprite that I have going on here is 32 by 12. If you change that up, uh, it doesn't matter. You can just make it bigger and smaller, and it won't affect the actual uh, system here. But in our OBJ underscore player object, you want to have a create event, and uh, in the control tab, click and drag over a code block. And uh, what we have here is sword equals false, red equals true, sprite underscore index equals zero, image underscore speed equals zero. So the only things you really need here are the sword equals false and the red equals true. These things are just for the actual like looking kind of system, I guess. So it's like when he moves to the left and right, it actually looks like he's moving to the left and right. Um, but the sword equals false, we're going to actually take a look at that a little later. Um, the right equals true, that's just keeping track of the direction he's currently in. Also, keep note, if you are doing the move thing, uh, just remember, you're going to want to have, because we have right equals true, uh, you're going to want to make sure that this first image is actually facing to the right. So when you choose like the sprite here, you can see he's like facing to the right, so obviously right equals true. Uh, now for the keyboard left, um, we have uh, X minus equals 3, that's basically just a simple little movement system I had for the tutorial purposes. Um, and right equals false, and again, the image index, and image speed, you guys obviously know what these are for already. Um, so right equals false, again, just keep track of the direction he's in. Uh, so our sword will later know, kind of, you know, whatever direction we're currently in, that's where it will appear, um, and in what direction. But anyway, uh, the keyboard right, pretty much same thing, only exception is the right, or excuse me, only change, I guess, is right equals true, since we're actually moving to the right. Alright, finally the press X key, and if you want you could change this press X key up to like something else, like spacebar or whatever. Um, this is basically going to initiate our sword, so once we press X, uh, our sword is actually going to appear. And the code for this is if right equals true and sword equals one, uh, instance create X, Y, OBJ sword, else instance create X, Y, OBJ sword. Now, the sword equals one is basically meaning that if we have the ability to actually create the sword, so we just can't like spam it and our sword will just stay there, uh, it's, it's just kind of keeping track of that thing. And making sure to, um, whatever. I, I, I think you guys know what I mean. I, like, hold back our sword, almost. Um, so, obviously, it's gonna create our sword, regardless of what direction we're facing. So, if right equals true, else, you know, obviously, it's right equals false. And, finally, into our sword object. So, first thing is, uh, you wanna go add event and create. So, when our sword is created and control, add a code block. Alarm zero equals three. So once our sword gets created here, it's going to have three steps until alarm zero activates. And in alarm zero, we have another code block, and it says instance destroy. So after like three steps, um, our sword here is going to get destroyed. Uh, if you want to make that a little higher or lower, uh, you could change this value three to something like ten. It would stay on the screen longer. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to keep it for three. All right, and moving on to the final event here, the step event. Um, what we have going on here. <coughs> <coughs> Jeez, uh, uh, is if the obj underscore player dot right, and for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, dot right is basically the variable pertaining to the player. Um, however, the dot is basically meaning that whatever, like whatever it's after the dot is going to be the variable, and whatever is before it is going to be the object that the variable pertains to. So since we have obj player dot right, this right here is going to basically be the uh, variable that belongs to our player. So, just in case you guys were wondering uh, what that means. Um, basically, it's going to cr um, 
or excuse me, not create the sword, it's going to make the sword go to our player and just kind of like stick there. And really that's all it's doing, uh, just making sure, it's like checking the directions and whatnot, and then it's making the uh, d decision whether to be the left sword or the right sword down the image index. And these values, the 22 and the 16, um, you can actually change these, they're just like how close or far away the sword is from the player. And that's pretty much it. So once you finish all that, we should have this, and uh, this should be your final result. So anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully it helped you out. And uh, feel free to comment, subscribe, all the different kinds of stuff. You guys know what to do. And uh, until next time, until next video, this has been Rex Furry. And as always, I'll see you all next time.